Hey, I'm Steve Krantz for Guitar Gathering. Thank you for joining us on this pentatonic scales workout. Now, last time we learned the pentatonic scale, uh, the five different forms of it and how it works. We learned about major roots and minor roots and all that sort of stuff. This time, this is gonna be a hands-on, have your guitar with you workout. Now, there's a PDF that goes along with this, so make sure and download that. You're not gonna be able to follow along without it. So the link is in the YouTube description down below and download that uh, PDF, and we're gonna get started. The last time's information was on pages one through four. We're gonna get started on page five, which is where the workout starts. So make sure you have your guitar with you. Remember, if you can't keep up with me right here, that's completely fine. Remember, you can come back to it later. You can slow it down. Just get that little uh, gear icon in the lower right-hand side of a YouTube video. Uh, click that and you can change the speed. So if things are going too fast or not fast enough, then add it to there. Pentatonic scales, one of the most fundamental aspects of guitar playing. Let's dive into them right now. Take a look at page five. All right, first thing, the main one, kind of the mother of all these five pentatonic forms is this first form. So it's at the fifth fret and I've got it written there at the top of page five. Let's play through that form together, okay? It's a standard um, fingering, so first finger's covering everything at the fifth fret, second finger's covering everything at the sixth, third finger's covering everything at the seventh, and pinky's covering everything at the eighth. Let's play it together just really slowly. We're gonna start on this low, on this low A right here. Ready, go. Then the fourth finger. Next string, first and third. Next string, first and third. Next string, first and third. Next string, first and fourth. First and fourth. Freeze. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing again. Start back at that low A, and we're gonna do all of that again. Ready, go. First and fourth. First and third. First and third. First and third. First and fourth. I have that uh, the shape written on top of page five. Let's go down in reverse. Starting with your pinky on that eighth fret first string. Ready, go. Pinky, first. Fourth finger, first. Next string down, third and first. Third, first. Next string down, third and first. Next string down, third and first. You're doing great. Fourth and first. Okay, let's do it one more time. Remember, this is, each of these pentatonic forms has two keys that it's basically working in, a major key and a minor key. Now, on the diagram there, you'll see that the open circle, that's indicating the minor root. So this is an A minor pentatonic scale that we're playing here. It is also, because they share the same key signature, if I look at what note is in the diamond there, which is on the sixth string at where my pinky is at, that's a C. So this is a C major and an A minor pentatonic scale. So let's play through it one more time, starting at that first finger on the sixth string. Ready, go. about getting them nice and clean. Let's go right back down. Repeat that top note. Back down. Doing great. Looking for good, long, clean notes. Transferring the weight from finger to finger. Remember the old Indiana Jones? He's in the He's in the temple there with the gold idol and he's got the bag of sand, remember that? And he's gotta kind of get the weight right between them. Think of that analogy as you're adjusting your fingers. Weight is on the first finger and then weight immediately transfers to the fourth finger. That's what we're looking for. When do we want these notes to be as long as possible. So you don't wanna go. You wanna try and make them long, keep that pressure down. Okay, one more time. Up and down, let's go a little bit faster. Ready, go. This is an A minor and a C 
C major pentatonic. We're going to repeat and go back down. Repeat that top note. Go. There you go. Hey, scoot it up a half step. Just scoot it up one half step. Now we're in B flat. Or actually, let's go two half steps. Let's go to a B, uh, B minor. So now I'm up two half steps. I'm at the seventh fret now. And I'm, let's just, we're, it's, we're still going to play the same shape, but now instead of an A minor scale where it's down here, it's at the seventh fret, which is a B, and we're going to put our first finger there, and now it's going to be a B minor or a D major scale. Ready? Play it. One, four. Repeat the top note, back down. Transfer of weight. That's a B minor or a D major pentatonic scale. All right, so let's play it, let's figure out another one. Let's do like exercise two, what does it say there? We're gonna play a B flat major. We're gonna take this same shape and we're gonna make it a B flat major. Well, which one's the major root? That was our pinky on the sixth string. So all I have to do, if we're looking for a B flat major, is I have to put my pinky on a B flat on the sixth string, which here's the B flat. So I'm gonna put my pinky there, which means all of my other fingers are back down here in the third position. And now this is a B flat major pentatonic scale. But go ahead and start at the beginning of the form with the first finger there on the G. Ready, go. This is the same, hey, same pattern. But Steve, I don't know all of these notes. That's the beauty of the pattern. <laughs> you don't have to know all the notes. Repeat the top note. Okay, it's a pattern, it's a pattern. What do we have exercise three there? It says we're gonna do it in E flat major. Okay, E flat, so we gotta find it E flat on our uh, sixth string. Well, there's an E, so I can't I can't get any lower than an open string, so I have to go up to 12th fret, that's an E. 11th fret would be an E flat, and I'm gonna put my pinky on this. So that means the rest of my hand is back here at the eighth position. So now I'm in the eighth position, so this is E flat major. What minor is it? What's the relative minor of that? Can you remember how that works? We go six steps up from E flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. This is a C minor and an E flat major pentatonic. Let's play it, ready. You're at the eighth position, same thing. Ready, go. Back down, repeat. One more exercise four let's do an F minor okay so now we're thinking about the minor root which is with our first finger and we're gonna put that on an F well there's one here at the at the first fret now I guess there would be one up here way up here at the 13th but let's go ahead and play the one down here so this is F minor or if I go three frets up it's the major root which is an A flat major F minor a flat major. There are pairs. Each major key has a has a minor key that's paired with it. All right, here we go. F minor pentatonic. Here we go. Ready? Go a little bit faster. Repeat the top note and go back down. Let's go back up to where we started with A minor and C major, which is at the fifth position. So we're gonna go right up to the fifth position and we're gonna do it one more time, a little bit faster. Put the gas on it. One, two, ready, go. Can you go in faster? One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Come on.
come on, it's going pretty fast there. Now, remember, the goal is not to play the scale up and down, but that's the place where we have to start. The goal is with this collection of notes that we're playing, and we're gonna try and make a little, uh, a little uh, um, uh, melody or something out of it. So we're gonna put, turn, on, turn on a track here for just a second, and I want you to take that pentatonic scale that we were just doing, A minor and C, pick a couple of notes, maybe the, Maybe on the fourth string, we could do maybe the one and three, and the third string, the one and three. And we're going to turn this little track on, and I want you to kind of improvise a little bit over just using maybe the notes, those four notes. Or if you want to use more of the notes out of the pentatonic scale, that's good too. So we're going to turn this on this track for a few seconds and let you play. what I'm doing. Just try and play, pick a couple notes, see if you can make something magic happen. stuff. All right, let's move on. Now there are five of these pentatonic forms. That's kind of the most, that's the more familiar one to all guitar players is that first one. But there are five of them. So if you really want to learn these bad boys, you got to go through all five of them. Now how I do that is I would start on one form and here's what I would do. And I'd scoot it up a half step. I'm not worried about speed, I'm worried about getting the pattern right. And I'd play it all the way up and all the way down and that's gonna take you about 10, 15 minutes. And you do that for about five out of seven days in one week and you've got that first pentatonic scale down pat, okay? Then the next week I would add to it the second form. So take a look at the second pentatonic form. All right, so let's move up to the seventh position now. And we're going to start on that diamonded note there in the second diagram there on page five. That's the diamond note. That's the major root. But we're going to put our second finger now. So we're going to play the same collection of tones. But since it's at a new place on the guitar, it's got a different fingering. Oh, Steve, you're telling me I've got to learn five different fingerings? Yeah, I really am. I really am telling you that. Um, if guitar playing was easy, everybody would do it. Okay, so just don't get overwhelmed. Just start with the first one, then try and add the second one. So let's just play through the second one here for a second. So we're gonna start with this shape now. So since this is on the uh, eighth fret, I'm gonna start it with my second finger since I'm in the seventh position. So we're gonna start with our second finger on that note there. So let's play through it really slow. Second, and then fourth, and then first and fourth. First, fourth, and what's the next one? First and fourth? What's the next one? First and third? Then the last two strings are the same, and it's two, four, two, four. Okay, let's go back to the beginning, and we're gonna play that again. So half of that exercise is just two and four, okay? Here we go, start back on that low C again. You're doing great. Ready, go. Two, fourth finger, first finger, fourth finger, next string, first and fourth, next string, first and third, next string, second and fourth, second and fourth, freeze, now we're going to go in reverse, go, four, two, next string down, four, two, next string down, three and one, Next string down, four and one, four and one, four and two. There you go. So now we're going to play it up and down. This will be exercise five, up and down. Ready? Go. Two, four, one, four, step. 
steady. One, four, in control. I'm not speeding up, I'm not slowing down, I'm going right with the tempo. Repeat the top note, we're gonna go right back down. Repeat the top note. Back down. Good, clean hand position. My hand is not reaching way out of, out of position. I'm just right there. My fingers are floating right above the frets that they need to be. All right, so that's in C. Now you'll notice the major and the minor roots, they've all flopped around on you. They're in different spots now. The major root is with the diamond, but now the minor root is on our first string, first finger on the fourth string. So you got, as I'm moving these positions around, the, the, the minor root and the major root are flipping around. So if I wanted to play this, let's say in G major, in G major, well, the second finger is the major root, so I have to put my second finger on the G, on the sixth string, and now I can play it in G major. So let's play it in G major. Ready, go. Come on, I know it's going fast. Did you wanna just watch somebody play guitar, or did you wanna actually learn how to do it? Play it, here you go, repeat the top note, go down. This is the ugly, work of actually learning how to play. Most folks, they just kind of look at it and they don't do this fundamental kind of work. And they just get lost in it. Do it again, a little bit faster. Ready, go. You get frustrated, you try it again. A toddler, our little, our little grandson is learning how to walk. When he falls down, repeat the top note. When he falls down, he doesn't get the least bit discouraged. He gets up and he tries it again. That's what, that's how our attitude needs to be. No other way around it. You can't be Michael Jordan without spending some lonely hours on the court trying to do it. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, the further down the page. There are three other forms. So let's just go through those forms. We're not gonna take a lot of time, but let's just go through them so you can see what's happening there. Look at that third form. This is probably the most complicated of, of the five forms. So let's go up to the ninth position. And here, what do we have here? We have a two, four, two, four, two, four. So that's great. All the first three combinations are one. And then, one and four, and then I shift up position, up a half step. I do one four, and then you can do one three there, two four, doesn't matter, okay? So if I did that again, you do it with me. I already know how to do this. You need, you're the one that needs to learn. Go up here to the 10th fret, put your second finger there. You ready? You can do this, you can do this. Ready, go. Two, four, this is the third form. Next string down, two, four. That's the minor root right there, that's the A. Next string down. That's the major root, that's the C. Two, four, now we're gonna do a one, four. And then we go up a half step and we go one, four. One, three. Repeat the top note and go back down. Shift down, four, one, four, two, four, two, four. To go up to the next form, the fourth form, that middle one there. So now we're up here at the 12th fret, and let's just do what it says. Ready? You play it with me. One, four, one, four, first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, first finger, or excuse me, second finger, fourth finger, first finger, first finger, fourth finger. Okay? Look at the fifth form. Now, wait a minute. I could just keep going up and that would put me at the, what is that, the 15th fret here? Or I could come down here and lower the octave because I'm gonna start running out of neck if I keep going up. But it, once you get over the 12th fret, then you can flip down an octave. So I'm gonna do the, the next form, but I'm gonna do it down here, okay? Instead of up here, because it just gets too high. So I'm gonna lower this an octave, put my second finger on the third fret of the sixth string and let's play this last fifth form. Ready? Go. I like this form because it's all balanced. One, four, one, four, and then two sets of two, four. Let's go back down. Four, two, four, two. Ready? Go. Then four, one, four, one. That's what I mean. It's 
it's balanced. And then 4-2-4-2. Four, two, four, two. How I would do that again is it, it took me about three months to learn all this stuff. Okay, so you're not going to learn it in two days. It took me three months to really get these underneath my fingers. The goal is not to play the form. I, anybody can play the form. I can get a robot to play the form. That's, not the, that's the, not the point. You want to get it under your fingers to where you don't have to think about it anymore. Where you don't have to think about that shape anymore. That's where we're going. Okay. Now, there are some patterns that I showed you in the PDF uh, back on page three. So flip over to page three. And the first pattern, we're going to go back to our original first form. I have it written there at the top of page three. Okay. And we're going to do this first pattern. What is it? It's, it's called sets of four. So it's basically going up through four notes. One, two, three, four. And then it goes down to the next note and goes up four from there. And goes down to the third note and goes up four from there. Fourth note. So you end up with a pattern that sounds like this. Okay, sounds really impressive when you start adding pull-offs and stuff on that. It's the same pattern. It's a pattern, okay? So let's do it. Let's play it together. I got the tab written down there for you just for your, uh, for you to help you out as well. So let's play pattern number one. Ready? Go. First finger, fourth finger, first finger, third. Now we're going to go back to fourth finger and do the next four. Now this is the second measure. First, third finger, first finger, third finger, down to the third finger. Now this is a lot if you haven't done this before. That's okay. Don't get frustrated with it. Just spend some time working on it. Then third finger. So if you can't keep up with me right now, that's all right. The main thing is come back to it again tomorrow. Don't give up on it. And then the last combination. Okay, and then you can go down in reverse too, and I have that written out there too. Look at pattern number two. This is a set of three. So instead of four notes going up, it's a set of three. So we end up with a triplet type pattern. Okay, so this one is one, fourth finger, first finger, and then. So when I put it all together, it sounds like this. So when I'm doing a solo, we got the track going and the guy's blowing a solo, one of the things that you can do is throw these little patterns in. Not the whole time, but a little bit, and it helps give some motion in there and you're not having to think about it because you've spent some time in the woodshed working on these dumb patterns, okay? Let's play the patterns of three. Ready? This is pattern number two, sets of three. Ready? Go. First finger, fourth finger, first finger, and back to fourth. Fourth, first, to read the music notation so try and just keep up with the tab <clears throat> or better yet look at your fingers and and see what they're doing there you want to take it up to the next level start naming the notes as you're playing them g a c back down c a g a g e and so on take a look at the last pattern there we gotta, gotta move on. We gotta, we gotta wrap up here. All right. So take a look at the uh, last pattern there. Pattern number three. This is we're doing. There's two notes on each string set, and we're gonna do each. We're gonna do three sets of three strings worth. So it's six notes. So this pattern here. Let me just play it for you. And in reverse. little bit of distortion of that and you're Eric Johnson okay um, and you get that get that flying speed wise work on that that's part of this workout as well okay before we land this ship I want to 
give you one huge exercise. These five patterns are not random, they connect, they connect. So one of the exercises that I used for years was this exercise here of connecting these patterns. So it starts on page six at the top of the page. I've got all the patterns written on the neck on the right side of the page, but on the front side, on the left side, you've got, I'm gonna ascend in one pattern and descend in the next pattern up. So here's what I'm talking about. I would go. I played the first pattern, I ended on that top note. Now I'm gonna shift up to the top of the second pattern, second form, and now I'm gonna read, I'm gonna go down. I'm ascending in one and descending in the other. Then I shift up, and now I'm gonna ascend in the third pattern. And descend in the next one. And again, whoop, I'm starting to get into the stratosphere here, so I can flip down here for this fifth, fifth pattern and ascend in that. So you end up with a sound that sounds like this. That's a good way to kind of learn how these patterns connect with each other. Now, I went through a 20 minute workout with you there, and uh, that is, took me about three months to learn all that sort of stuff. So don't get discouraged if you can't keep up with me the first time. We're gonna be doing another couple of lessons on pentatonics, but I wanted to just introduce it to you. I know you can't get it in 20 minutes, but you times these ideas by week in and week out for a few weeks, you're gonna to start to find some real practical use out of these pentatonic scales and your, your soloing on the neck is gonna be forever changed. Okay, so it's not just a mystical, I'm just gonna solo whatever happens to feel in my head. It doesn't work that way. It may look like it's that way, but it's not that way. It's a combination of patterns and ideas that you have underneath your fingers, and that's where the hard, lonely, boring work of guitar playing comes in handy. But that's, the, that's what it takes to, to get you to a place where you can solo. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Be looking out for the next lesson that's coming up on pentatonic skills. We're gonna start adding some blues notes with them and do another workout with them as well. Take care, keep up the great work in your, in your learning. Your music matters. We'll see you next time.